Welcome to growing your own food in your own backyard. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the like button. I would like to give you a quick tour of my backyard where I grow food. I'm in Colorado in zone 5B and I like to discuss the challenges and the rewards of backyard gardening. Right here is my pollinator friendly garden bed. The reason why it's important to have a to create a pollinator friendly garden is because we're losing 200 to 250 beads a day. They're dying every day. And if you're gonna grow food, you need pollinators. So what I've done here is created a pollinator friendly garden that has native perennials as well as annuals. And as we move into the corner of my backyard, I have my little retreat as you can see where I take time to meditate and I have my friendly owl. And I also am growing a sweet Woodworth ground cover that just really perfumes the air. So this is my little miniature forest, if you will. And it also has a stockpile of wood chips. Wood chips is very important in backyard gardening for me because Wood chips will assist in helping me grow very nutrient, excuse me, develop very nutrient rich soil. Right here is my gala apple tree that I started from seed in January of 2019. The purpose of doing this is to create cyan wood so that I can graft onto my crab apple tree. In this bed also is a is a potato plant and I don't know exactly which kind it is. I think it may be a Norfolk potato plant and it's growing in a potato bag. And the reason why I have this screen mesh covering over the potato plant is Colorado has an insect called the Colorado potato beetle and it is notorious for decimating a potato plant. And because that's a, a challenge here in Colorado, when we're growing potato plants, I don't wanna take the risk of attracting the Colorado potato beetle and losing my potato plants. So I decided to cover it with a mesh covering. I have been working on this bid, trying to fill it up. It is a very large bid, but again, I'm trying to create pollinator friendly gardens. I love flowers. And as a result of it, I have been trying to fill this bed in. It's been taking some time, but I'm getting it done. At the end of this bed is my elephant ear plant. This is the second year I've been able to grow it. I dug it up last summer. I overwintered it in the garage in soil. It died back, went into dormancy. I planted it this year. Unfortunately, another challenge we're having in Colorado is because we're 5,000 feet above sea level, our, the ultraviolet light is very intense. And as you can see, even under the apple tree, it is getting sunburned and sun scorched. And, and this is a heat loving tropical plant. But as you can see, that our sun here in Colorado is so intense that it can burn and scorch tropical plants. So this is another challenge we're having growing uh, vegetation in Colorado. I've extended this bed with more flowers. Again, creating a pollinator friendly garden. I also have a bird bath to attract bees and birds. So if they're thirsty, they'll be able to drink water. In this corner right here, 
unfortunately we had a freak late snowstorm and if you would check the card above you will see some of the damages that occurred when we had this freak lake snow late snowstorm in May and as a result there were three hostess plant this hostess plant was about this big and it was wide enough to touch the fence unfortunately the roots probably got damaged during the snowstorm and the growth was stunted. The same way with this one as well. Now this one seemed to bounce back really well and it's possible it was sheltered from this pine tree, but this wasn't sheltered. And as you can see, it also is getting scorched by the sunlight. And I'm not quite sure why this is being scorched because last year it didn't seem to have this problem but again it got damaged as a result of the roots freezing from the snowstorm i'm hoping that by next summer it'll bounce back i'm just been really monitoring it so again here's another challenge we have in colorado we don't know when we're going to have these late freezes in April or May. And therefore we could lose vegetation or vegetation could be damaged. And as a result, it does take some babysitting and trying to get it to bounce back. I am really disappointed in this particular bed because I love hostas. And the one, and my prize hosta that was actually three feet tall, the, it was stunted, but I'm not giving up on it. We have my Asparagus bed. This is my first time growing asparagus. I'm really excited about this particular project because I can now have a perennial vegetable every spring. I don't expect to have asparagus into maybe the third year. I have read that you don't want to start harvesting asparagus until it's established, but it has done very, very well. I do believe it's in a great location, and so I'm really excited about that. Also in this bed, I'm growing sweet potatoes in this beer barrel. And I've been really, really pleased with the outcome of the sweet potato plant. It's healthy, it's doing very well. I do keep a mesh covering over the sweet potato plant just to keep the insect attacks down. I don't want to take any chances of any insect attacks, so I will keep this covering over the sweet potato plant. If you check the card above, you will see one of my videos where I'm chitting the sweet potatoes off us, uh, chitting the, the sweet potato vine off the sweet potato, and I ended up with about eight or nine sweet potatoes that I have planted in this barrel. I will harvest the sweet potatoes right before frost, but it is growing, it's doing really well, and I'm excited about the results of the sweet potatoes. Moving on to my cantaloupe plant, I have been having challenges growing this cantaloupe plant. This is my first time growing cantaloupe. Cantaloupe can be grown in Colorado. However, it will present some challenges. What I've discovered is perhaps the cultivar I have planted is not conducive to our weather. We will need a couple of more months in order to produce cantaloupes. One of the challenges I've discovered is that this plant wilts during the high point of the hot weather. And the blooms, the, the, the yellow blooms were dropping off. So I had a lot of yellow flowers, mostly all male flowers, doing this right here, where the blooms die back and drop off. Moving on to my raised bed, I have mints, I have oregano, I have nasturtium, and this is edible. There are challenges growing nasturtium. They do prefer partial shade, partial sun in our climate. Again, the sun is very intense and some of the leaves were scorching. I have thyme, onions, and you can see this onion's pretty much about ready. And I had already harvested four onions and you will see that in one of my videos. 
this row, I continue to grow nasturtiums, cucumbers, two cucumber plants. And I've already harvested one cucumber from that back cucumber plant. And it was really, really tasty. So that was really exciting. In the back of this raised bed, I am growing Concord grapes, which is pretty common to grow in the northern climates. I'm really excited about this particular grapevine bouncing back after the snowstorm. However, what I did discover is this Concord grapevine did have, did suffer some damage from that late snowstorm. I seem to we get a cluster of grapes on this side of the grapevine. However, on this side of the grapevine, I didn't get that many cluster of grapes. If you go back to the video where I was talking about which vegetation recovered from the mid late snowstorm, it really looked like the vine had died. I did cover my grapevine during the freak snowstorm in May. I didn't really cover it with a frost blanket. I covered it with sheets because I literally ran out of frost blankets. But when you do decide to check out the link on what was able to be recovered from the grapevine, you will see the condition it was in. But to my surprise, it did bounce back. Again, this is one of the challenges of growing food and gardening in Colorado is dealing with these late spring storms. As we continue to move along my bed, you can see my cherry tomatoes are doing really, really good. And I'm excited to see that some of these tomatoes are actually ready to be harvested. And I'm gonna go ahead and harvest some of these tomatoes. This is really an awesome harvest. I'm kind of excited about this. And I have, excuse me, I have tomatoes right here. And I have more tomatoes to harvest over here. This particular tomato plant was having a difficult time ripening. So what I decided to do, because Grapes will not ripen with temperatures in the 90s. So I put this dark screen around the tomato plant and I kept it there for maybe a couple of weeks. And as a result, it cooled the plant down and I was able to get about 30% shade with this screen cover. And as you can see, I have tomatoes that have ripened. So I'm really excited to see that the tomatoes are ripening and they're actually pulling right off. Look at that. That is really, really cool. So I'm just actually just having a good old time harvesting these tomatoes. This is so exciting to eat vine ripened tomatoes. The, the stuff you buy in the store does not have flavor to it at all. And although you buy organic tomatoes, they're very, very tasteless. So this excites me to know that I have fine ripened tomatoes and the tomatoes are starting to ripen really nicely because I keep a shade cloth or a shade covering, I should say, over the plant when temperatures reach around 90 degrees. Uh, looks like I might have gotten all of them. The other thing that I was able to avoid 
is tomato hornworms. That is something that I will not tolerate. So once the plants were pollinated, I kept a covering over it. And one of the things you wanna do in order to pollinate your tomato plants is when your flowers open up like this, just thump it like that. And that actually pollinates the flowers. And so every day I would come out, look to see where I have flowers and where you see clusters of tomatoes like that, they were cluster of flowers and I would just thump it. And I did that every day. And once I got through pollinating the tomato plants, I would put a covering over the plants to keep the plants from being eaten by critters, squirrels, or by tomato hornworms. I have my beets right here, and this is my fall planting. I have my carrots, which I keep covered. More nasturtiums. And I'm doing a lot of companion planting, nasturtiums, marigolds, this helps cut down on insects and become and also becomes an insect barrier for a lot of the bad insects. My strawberry plants and this is going to be my second harvest. You can see I've got flowers here. I've got a lot of strawberries that are look they're about to turn red. I'm going to have to cover this patch. And the reason why, I had about 15 strawberries here, and I think the squirrels got to them. And now that I am going into my second wave of strawberries, I'm going to have to cover them. Over here is my bell pepper plant. I have already harvested quite a few bell peppers. As you can see, I have a couple of big ones over here. I have a big one back here lot of flowers. Look at all these flowers. So I'm going to be getting tons of t uh, bell peppers and I'm really, really excited about that. This potato plant is ready for harvest and I can't wait. I'm going to do a video on seeing how well I've done. All of the vegetation has died back. It's ready for harvesting. So this is something I'll be doing uh, before the end of the week. This peach tree is my pride and joy. It has a long history and it has a sad ending. This peach tree was started from a seed seven years ago. And I waited a great deal before the tree started producing peaches. I was fearful that the cultivar wasn't gonna pe uh, produce peaches at all. And lo and behold, this year, I received a tree full of peaches. Therefore, I was putting these mesh coverings over each of the peaches. And unfortunately, I had two menacing squirrels that were not only tearing the bags open, but they were ripping the bags off the tree and they decimated my tree and left me with one peach, which I have right here, covered with the mesh bag and I'm cherishing this because this year was the first year it was producing peaches. I had to put a bird netting over the peach tree just to keep the squirrels off the peach tree. So it is a bittersweet experience that this tree is healthy. I have not experienced any leaf curl, any diseases. From this peach tree, it, it's been growing in wood chips for a while. It's planted in a, a nutrient-rich soil. And again, this tree was full of peaches. These are the challenges of growing food in your backyard. You're dealing with critters. I hear people have problems with deers, rabbits, squirrels, insects, whatever. In my case, this season, it was squirrels. So next year, I'm going to start off with a bird netting that seemed to work best for me and hopefully this cultivar doesn't skip every year to fruit. I'm hoping next year I have peaches. Just wanted to give you that little story about 
my peach tree and again it was a great accomplishment to be able to start this peach tree from seed. As we continue moving along this side of my backyard, I'm growing a lot of containers with flowers so I can continue promoting a, pollen, a friendly pollinator garden. This is my kale that I'm growing in a pot. I have it shaded next to my barbecue grill and I also have a shade cloth and an insect barrier covering over the kale. Believe it or not, I have not had any problems with any uh, worms or caterpillars and I've kept it cool so therefore I've had kale all summer. This is my fourth harvest. As you can see, I just harvested this about a week ago and the fact that I can continue growing kale during the summer you want to create a microclimate that will allow kale to grow in a very shaded area. Keep it cool with this covering and it has worked out. So I'm really happy about this progress. I'm also growing two lemon trees and I'm also growing my dwarf moringa. This is my first time growing dwarf moringa. I have two other plants and I have them uh, strategically placed in different parts of my yard to see which one does the best. So I'm trying to find that microclimate for the type, of, the type of tropical plants I'm growing. The lemon trees, I started from seed and they seem to be doing really well. I started this in January of 2017 and I started this under a grow light and I actually started this one in April of 2019 outside and it seems to be doing better. Uh, here's my pineapple plants I'm growing I, in its two years, excuse me, it's in a second year of growth. I will have to bring it in when it gets cool. I'm actually growing turmeric which is doing really well. So as we continue you can see that I have a lot of container uh, plants. I'm also growing ginger and I don't have it marked when I started it but it's doing really good keep in mind I'm in zone 5b therefore I'm going to have to overwinter these tropical plants either on the windowsill or under my grow light so we will see this is my beets I'm growing in a container as well. Again, I have protection around it because this is a cool season crop and I want to make sure it doesn't get sun scorched. It's doing really good. I usually pull it up like this and then clip it. So I've been growing this as well. So I started this in early August. Again, more pollinator friendly flowers. I just planted my arugula seeds. And again, this is providing protection from insects as well as providing uh, some shade. So as we continue, I just have a lot more container gardening, friendly pollinator flowers. Again, I'm growing beets in this container as well. So I have a combination of a lot of flowers because they are, again, pollinator friendly, uh, creating a pollinator friendly environment, as well as growing food in many different ways in the in raised beds and containers and finding those microclimates for certain types of vegetation. So I hope you enjoyed the tour of my backyard. This is Backyard Gardening and thank you for coming along with me and have a good day. Bye-bye.